but it's a mutual, it's a mutual society that helps each other. As far as the Hispanic community, the Northern New Mexico, Southern Colorado people, it's something that we have that is unique and genuinely ours. When you're looking for solutions, you need to look everywhere. It's very culturally relevant, and it's something that deserves to be preserved and continued. I, I hope I do my grandfather proud. I remember driving through town with my grandparents and my parents and seeing the biggest building in town here in Antonito. And I recall asking my grandparents, what does the SPM DTU stand for? The initial stands for Sociedad Protección Mutua de Trabajadores Unidos, the Society for the Mutual Protection of Workers. Being a child, the SPM DTU was always a building here in town that had such like mystique and mystery to it. Because mm -hmm. for a long time it was closed and nobody got to get in here. It wasn't until I joined it I understand really what, what it stood for. It was more than just the biggest building on the street of Antonito. The SPM DTU is the oldest uh, Hispanic uh, organization designed to try to combat discrimination. First of all, it was a secret organization. That's why people don't know about it. The SPM goes way back, and we're still in operation. It's a mutual aid society. We're here to help each other. Yo te ayudo, tú me ayudas. I'll give you my hand in friendship, but if you need help, I'm here to help you. That's as beautiful as it gets. They decided to form the SPM because in those days there was a lot of discrimination against Mexicanos and Spanish-speaking people in the valley. You really had to take care of each other, and that's really part of the Latino uh, tradition anyway. After the war, the Mexican War, the people in this area, became, we became second-class citizens. It doesn't matter if you're Hispanic, you've been here 500 years, or even from a Native American point of view, if you've been here all, you know, 50,000 years. They're called Mexican. They're called by their former nationality. Not, they're not called by U.S. citizens. They're now in an English-speaking territory, English laws, and new settlers coming in. A whole different system got superimposed on the populace. Things changed. Uh, not everybody understood how things worked. The economy was transformed from a a trade and barter economy to a cash economy with the coming of the railroad. How were they going to pay their taxes when they don't have hard cash? In order to get hard cash, you have to sell your property, you have to sell your livestock. 1862, we've got the Homestead Act. So people are just coming out and grabbing land where they can. Of course, they're going to try to grab land that's already been settled, that's already been, um, who's got acequias or irrigations already dug. Within 10 years, 90% of the land was lost. The SPME to you in part was created as an answer to what was perceived as uh, an onslaught of water rights and land rights. The basis of, of, of life in, in the San Luis Valley. Land and water is the genesis of it all. They lost their livelihood, essentially. People had to look for other jobs. And so that really fueled these families who got jobs with the railroads, got jobs with the mines. The newspapers of the time stated that the people of the San Luis Valley were cheap labor and that they weren't worth very much. So that really gave rise to these unions who they weren't trying to get anything more, they just wanted equal rights. There was a lot of discrimination. Hence, you had organizations like uh, the Sociedad being created as an answer to those discrimination and, and those issues. The San Luis Valley was the birthplace of the SPMDTU. This is the cradle of the organization. It was founded in 1900. To fight discrimination in the fields, discrimination in the railroads, and discrimination in the mines. To protect the land, protect the water. This is a more a community-minded way of, of solving an issue. It was difficult for Indian Hispanics, people of color, to get insured by major U.S. insurance companies. The society actually started an insurance company and started selling policies to insure the members. 
They even had a revolving loan fund within the, 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 uh, the insurance company. Where by pulling the money together, they were actually lend money to the members that would otherwise not qualify for a loan at, at a bank, for example. So the SPMDTU in large part was a community struggle to answer these kinds of issues and, and to provide a, a focus, a, a way of organizing. You'd get this support from the other members. For example, if uh, say one of the members' wife would die, then the members would take charge of that person's farm. They'd, they'd farm it, they'd help them, they'd help their widow. And dealing with funeral issues, they would come about and support a family, would uphold a community in that way. They would all, along with your neighbors, they would all get together and, and provide a meal to the dolientes, which means those that are hurting because somebody died. When a member would pass on, they would form committees to go help the family of the deceased member. Like in those days, bringing wood, pitching some money, give it to the family. They'd help people bring in the crops. If you got sick, they would appoint a committee to go visit you in the hospital. Even today when we have a meeting, we kind of give an update on our members, especially if someone's sick, you know, if someone's gone to visit him, how he's doing, if they need help. They decided, let's unite. Let's come together, the strength in numbers. And that's what they did. But the SPMDTU is just one example of what happened throughout the Southwest. There was a proliferation of mutual aid societies that were formed immediately after 1848 in Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, California. Now the SPM was founded, like I said, in 1900. But there are a lot of similar mutual groups, Hispanic mutual groups that are founded throughout the Southwest. And we're proud because we're one of the remaining mutual aid societies that still exist until today. SPM is in, in a little town in Southern Colorado in the, in the San Luis Valley, a little town called Antonito. That's where the organization was founded. This building is going to be 100 years old in three more years. It's an important building. It's registered in both the Colorado and the National Registry of Historic Places. It was an Indian Hispanic, Victor Manzanares was the architect, and it served as a prototype architecturally for several buildings in the valley, like Sam's Covered Wagon, in San Luis. We are standing in the sala of the SPMDTU. It is the kind of like a gymnasium type space. There used to be dances held here, boxing matches, weddings, a lot of community events were held here. I actually had my my wedding dance here, 1978. That building hosted weddings, dances, one end, there's a stage that has two dressing rooms, okay? So one time they had performances, plays in there. On the top of it, there's a projection room, so they showed movies in there. And if you can see back there, you can see where they used to uh, have their projector, where they used to show the movies this way. The building is 7,000 square feet, which is almost the size of a basketball court. And in fact, they did play basketball in there. And they also played roller skating. There was a roller skating ring at one time. I could imagine there was a lot of life, there was a lot of laughter, there was a lot of energy that happened in this place. The SPMDTU sponsored a lot of great community events. You hold that one. They used to have wrestling events here too. This was from the anniversary that was held in um, 1961, 26th of November. These are some of the sponsors that actually sponsored the, the convention. 1964, 1975. And they had the Folklorico group was here from Denver. Music by the Sonics. Check this out. 1964, El Corrido de Kennedy. And the founder was a man by the name of Celedonio Mondragon. 
he's so revered in our organization that whenever his name is mentioned, everybody stands up. No matter what we're talking about, we stand up, we have an official hymn. And even in our local meetings, we're supposed to sing the himno oficial. And we're standing in these two lines as we're singing a song, okay? Everybody's singing, and we have usually people, someone playing the guitar. And in that himno oficial, there's one part that said, uh, saludamos la bandera, you know, we salute the flag. And when we say that, then everybody has to salute the flag. It's the SPM flag or the uh, American flag. Usually there's an American flag in the room. We would say the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, uh, business would be conducted. We'd find out how much people's dues were. And they talked about community issues right here, uh, that if somebody needed something, they would mention it. All of our meetings are in Spanish, even today. They have a constitution, they have bylaws. The SPM is set up with a Concilio Superior, which is like the, the governing board of the whole organization and all these local chapters. During its heyday, the society has spread from all the way from Cheyenne, Wyoming, to Las Cruces, New Mexico, to the south, and to the west, all the way to Durango, and to the east, all the way to Primero, Trinidad, and that area. At one time, the SPM had 65 local chapters. These different concilios were founded in all the small little towns in southern Colorado, northern New Mexico. Now, each one of those little concilios, the local councils, had a building also. If you go to San Luis, there in uh, Chama, you can still see some of the buildings. Made out of adobe, so the members came together and, and built it. They had, all did it through their own labor. And there's nine officers, from prison to doorman. So once a uh, little city could get nine members to a meeting and they could form a chapter. And then it became the name of that town, you know, like Concilio Numero Uno, Santo Nito. In terms of how you joined, usually it was by word of mouth. In my case, one of my wife's uncles told me about it. He was a member in Alamosa. I'm actually, he was a treasurer, a secretary. So he was very much about Herman Martinez. My family was from Canales County. And my grandfather was a member of the Concilio, of, of, of SPMDTU. And he was uh, a prominent member of the Concilio Número Dos, the second Concilio. The first one being Anthony, the second one being Capulín. I joined the SPM in uh, 1967, almost 54 years ago. I was a student at Adams State University. First I joined the, the, the Concilio in Alamosa, which is number 19. And then when we moved to Denver, later on I joined uh, Concilio Siete, number seven. My grandmother on my uh, paternal side, uh, I think was involved, but certainly my paternal grandfather was. On my maternal grandmother's side, she was very much involved. That building is the Femenilas. Femenilas means feminine ones. Las Femenilas were part of the SPMDTU, a ladies' aid society. You could join, but somebody had to sponsor you. So my mother-in-law sponsored me to join. So I joined the Femenilas, and for me, it was a big honor. I first learned about the SPMDT you from my grandfather, Daniel Valdez. He was a member of the Concilio in Espinosa. And I've been a member since 1978. I hold the office of Calificador of the Superior. I joined the SPMDTU in 1978. Uh, I was invited by a friend of mine, Herman Martinez. I served as Presidente Superior from 2000 to 2005. And presently, I'm the Consejero Superior. I am from the small community seven miles west of here. Las Mesitas, Colorado, and I am a member of the SPMDTU Concilio Numero Uno here in Antonito, Colorado. I was introduced to the SPMDTU formally to become a member, Kate, in 2010 uh, by my friend Rogelio Briones. I decided to join after I did some personal research within my family. I was reading up on the SPMDTU and I saw that my great-great-grandfather Eligio Ruival 
was a, uh, the signer to the preamble. And I was just flipping through this book and I noticed there on page 18, this name Eligio Ruival. That would be my great, great grandfather from Las Mesitas, Colorado, seven miles to the west. So by seeing his name in this book as being a signer to the preamble, I felt it almost a duty for me to join the SPMDTU to do my part, to give a little bit of my life, however long I may, may be blessed to live, to help continue the organization to live. So I felt a great tie to this. Not only is this man Eligio Rival, my great great grandfather, his initials ER is my family's cattle brand. So when I saw that Eligio Rival, I was like, wow, that's almost, how can I say, a, a sign, I guess you would say, that's an agreement that I need to join this organization and keep it going in memory of, of my, my great great grandfather, Eligio Rival. I found out that I had a direct tie to it, so I felt it was important to join. The membership was starting to dwindle. There wasn't very many uh, younger persons joining at the time. So I just felt uh, almost driven to join, uh, almost felt like it was a duty to keep the, the organization going. And I've uh, been in this concilio now for 12 years, and I continue to serve as the, in the capacity of the guardia, the, the guard to, to, to the council. We have our guard make sure that everybody in the meeting is a member. When we have our meetings, there's a new password that's given out to the members. So the guardia, in which capacity I serve, I walk up to the membership, to the hermanos and the hermanas, and I shake their hand, and they have to tell me the password in order for me to let them in the meeting. So I wanted to show you this here. Look at this. So you can imagine someone coming up and they have to tell me the password and we'll let them in. Pretty nifty. <laughs> Being part of the SPM DTU means to me is pride. It's something original. It's something very unique. I believe it's an organization that is something that Conejos County, something that the state of Colorado, specifically Southern Colorado, is truly theirs. As far as the Hispanic community, the Northern New Mexico, Southern Colorado people, it's something that we have that is unique and genuinely ours. There's a unique story behind this de Lisa. Each member, when you're initiated, you're presented one of these devisas. They don't look like this anymore. This one here is over a hundred years old. This was given to me by my aunt's husband. His name was Gilbert Martinez. This used to belong to his father, Elias Martinez. In 1901, that gentleman Elias was born. A uh, story was told to me that he wanted to join the service when he turned 18 in 1919. However, I believe he had a health problem when I was told and he was not able to join the service. So he joined the next best thing, which was the SPMDTU. And this was his devisa. As you can see, this is from a concilio numero tres, council number three, Mogote, Colorado. 1900, we didn't have cars then. Then we had to go horseback or in a wagon. The reason this is torn right there is what I was told is when he was riding his horse that rubbed there and it rubbed it raw. But he used to ride to the meetings from Paisaje San Rafael on horseback to come to the meetings. And then the backside cape when one of our members dies, we turn it around and you wear it at their funeral service backwards. Examples of these this old are all in the ground with, with the members that have died, they bury them with him. But he, he never got buried with his. His son Gilbert decided to keep this and he was never a member. He knew that I was a member of the SPM DTU. As one of his gifts on his deathbed, he gave this to me in tears. And he told me, always wear this in memory of my father. 
but there are very few of these and this is one of my most uh, cherished possessions. I don't bring this out very much. This is one of the best gifts that I've ever been given in my life. Very proud of this. This flag, we take it to all our conventions and carry it with us in the parade. We take it to funerals also. Well, it's really survived because the, the members have uh, made a commitment to it. The organization's been a big part of my life. It's, it's, it's a good organization. It's good to retain the history and the culture of this organization. And I think, I think it's a sense of pride for the community. It's, a, it's, a, it's been here a long time. People can relate to it. They see that it's still here and, and they feel a sense of pride in that. They, they know that it's something that they'd like to keep going and, and that's a good thing. This, this building isn't vandalized at all. The windows are still intact. They're not broken. The statue outside is not defaced. This building has a lot of community pride. So that's, I, I, I'm, I believe our community of Antonito is very proud of this building. We decided to restore the building down in Antonito. So we've gotten several grants from, the, from not only the State Historical Fund here in Denver, that re helps restore buildings, but also from the Sangre de Cristo Fund. You've heard of the Sangre de Cristo National Heritage Area down in Alamosa. So once again, be a community center where people can have weddings, can have dances, can have mo uh, movies. The building is actually in disrepair. That wall is about to fall down, so that's part of the immediate uh, things. Priority and repair. Priority, yeah. So hopefully all this will be addressed soon. Again, you know, it's a, it's a labor of love. These are the actual plans for how we're going to restore the building. Historical fund, they, there's a lot of things going on to upgrade the building, to renovate it. One of them was a million dollar grant from the historical fund, and there was another grant, about 250000 So things like that, we, that's pretty good. We can do a lot of work on this building, do a lot of upgrades on it, and get it up to where it can be used once it's fixed up and the plumbing is good and the electrical is good, then it can be utilized. We're gonna turn one of the parts of that building, which is a, what we use as an office now, we're gonna turn that into a museum of the SPM. We don't have as many members as, as we used to have. We don't, we don't have as many concilios as we used to have, but we're still here. Most of the members now are older and uh, we need to get the youth involved so we can keep it going, keep the organization going, keep the history alive. So it's a thing that we want to try to get the youth more involved in because that is the future. Matter of fact, just last year, my daughter was initiated into the SPMDTU. She lives in Denver, but she was initiated into our Concilio in Alamosa. I have another daughter that also lives in Denver that's considering joining. So I think Zohelio has three of his kids that are in the association. I think it's something that needs to be taught to, to younger persons. I'm teaching my daughters now. My daughter, Ana Alicia Lucia, who's 10, and my daughter, Markel Alma, who's six, to value this organization, to let them know that they have a history in it and that it's something that they need to, in time, should they choose to, and I hope they do, that they join. It's something, like I say, that's very unique it's very culturally relevant, and it's something that deserves to be preserved and continued. So it's a protection mutua. It's a mutual society that helps each other. In our competitive world today, you don't see that very much, people helping each other. What I've come to learn from the hermanos that have mentored me is the amount of respect that we endear to one another. It's such a loving and giving fraternal organization when we see each other we are generally pleased to see one another and we greet each other with hugs and it's almost feels like a second family in, in a way an extended family something unique that we're all a part of and uh, it's just a great organization to be part of and uh, I want to keep the tradition going the SPM still exists I'm a member of the SPM it's a reflection that uh, their struggle goes on and uh, that uh, uh, until there is complete equity, uh, the, con the struggle will continue to go on. Um, I think those kinds of, of uh, organizations uh, find reflection in many ways 
not the least of which is teaching others how to organize and the value of organization. Discrimination still exists. Certainly a lot of progress has been made. I certainly think there's a lot of progress still to be made. When you're looking for solutions, you need to look everywhere. I, I hope I do my grandfather proud. Adiós, tía Virginia. Adiós, tía Evelyn.